Welcome to Pharma Drama, the channel where we look at the science of healthcare and healthcare products. In today's special video, we're going to talk to a former UCL graduate, Meridal, who set up his own pharma company, M2M Pharmaceuticals. You may have heard of them because we did an interview on his site a few months ago, but they've just won a very special award. And so I thought it'd be a really good idea to talk to him about what that award was, what it means for his business, and how it might inspire young people to go into the pharmaceutical industry. So, if that sounds good, get yourself a cup of tea or coffee, sit back, and let's make a start. Riddle, welcome back to the School of Pharmacy. Um, we did a previous video where you talked us through setting up a pharma company and in particular your experience and what it was like having done an MSc and that helping you build up your own pharma company. But you just had some really good news that you won the King's Award for Enterprise International Trade. So I thought it'd be a really good idea to have a conversation about what that means for you and your business and how you got there and to try and inspire younger people that want to set up their own uh, businesses. Hope that'll be okay. So, with that in mind, just tell us briefly about um, M2M and the company you set up. Thank you for having me again. Um, it's a real privilege to be here again, um, sitting down with you and have a, have a conversation over coffee. Um, yeah, it's an, as you mentioned, um, it's an amazing journey we have been going through and we have just been recently been recognized, um, which is like a ice on the cake. Um, and we all are enjoying, um, uh, hence I'm here today mm. to, to, to talk more about it. That's very good. So first off, tell us a little bit about what the award is and why it was awarded. It is the King's Award for Enterprise. Every year, King's Award Office, um, which actually it has been approved by the palace uh, under the recommendation of different departments. And then it goes to Downing Street, who gives the final approval and then final signature from the palace. And it is a very, very competitive um, award. Mm -hmm. uh, we were very lucky to have this one uh, within eight years of our operation. Uh, and you know, we are, a, we are a thriving company, but we are still small if you compare. We are only seven of us, um, uh, and a lot of credit goes to the people who work behind the scene to achieve this. Um, and you, you would know this is the most prestigious award in the UK. So, mm. so we are really, really happy. Yeah, that is really good. So the award is for international trade. So just tell us a little bit about where do you trade? So we trade all over the world. Mm, but if you want to fine tune it, um, of course the UK is there, but that's national. Internationally, mainland Europe, uh, USA, mm -hmm. Uh, Asian countries. We haven't done anything for South American countries, Australia, New Zealand, and, and Middle East yet, but those areas are growing. Mm. So we do have an intention to explore ourselves into those international markets. Yeah, also it gives room for your company to grow, doesn't it? Because you've got markets that you've not tapped into yet. Absolutely. Yeah. What's the difference between, say, the Far East? Um, pharmaceutical market compared with the North American market? All are growing. Um, it's easier to do North American market because, because you know, we are in CROs. So the concept of CRO establishment, the financial terms, the appreciation is well established. So it is relatively easier. Um, but we have got Asian clients as well and, and, and we enjoy working with the clients all over the place. Um, and we are a problem solving company. Mm. Uh, and, and you know, dynamically problem will always exist. If you know how to solve, you always have got a business to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so M2M has been growing amazingly over the last eight years and that is down to you obviously, but it's also down to the people that you work with. So just tell us a little bit about the people you work with. It's more of a 99.9% .9 is people I work with. <laughs> <laughs> You're, you've, you've shortened yourself to just 0.1% there. Maybe less than that. Hmm. It's, it's that it. Uh, I always say, like M2, the company, the founder of the company is only as good as the team. 
so therefore the full credit goes to the team they 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 work tremendously hard and especially when it is a very small company you have to work unconditionally mm. uh, uh, that that is key what, what it brings you is this sort of recognition mm -hmm. uh, which you cannot quantify mm. like uh, any any uh, x amount of money will not guarantee you winning this such a prestigious award uh, and that's something like a, we, I try to inject. Uh, it probably comes back from me like a, what I learned. Mm. Um, so, so team gets the fruit credit, full credit for it. Um, then point one person or even a, like a, I don't want to quantify that, but other people I always have got a huge like a respect and recognition uh, are clients, of course, mm -hmm. because they pay our day to day bill. Yeah. And because of them, we are here. Mm -hmm. And the contact and collaboration. I often say, the, of like a contacts, communicate and collaborate. Mm. These three are three C's. Three C's. Very, yeah. very, 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 very important. Yeah. Um, so when I try to do that as a as my golden triangle, uh, I call that as a colleagues, clients. And another C, and that C has got another three C's into it, <laughs> which is nothing but a contact, communication, mm. and collaboration. Yeah, right. And I must say, I am blessed that my my contact, communication, and collaboration is I am immensely proud. Because mm. uh, you were here as a student many years ago, and yet we're still interacting today, aren't we? Just probably twenty years later. So, how has interacting with universities helped you grow your business? Tremendously, like as I say, like a three says. Uh, I started here twenty-two years ago, and if you ask me what has been constant in your life last twenty-two years, is my relationship with UCL. Mm. Um, and I studied here. Then, as you know, I used to work for Four Materials, which was a spin-out company from this place mm -hmm. by Professor Graham Bakhtan. Mm -hmm. And I will a uh, more than a thank you to Graham and Four Materials mm. uh, for giving me the job to uh, to work, and then also the freedom to explore ourselves mm. with the with the synergistic atmosphere, um, which has been a, like a long term. Um, injection at UCL. Mm. Uh, I think we were embedded with all those like a good qualities mm. uh, here. And that that helped me personally to develop where, where I am. Uh, and I tried to inject those like positive vibe into my team mm. and hope, hope it works. Yeah, no, it clearly does work. I also should say at this point that I'm here because of Graham Buckton as well, aren't I? Because uh, he gave me a postdoc many years ago, so that's good. Um, so clearly you, you do experiments here and you um, you come and um, use some of our equipment and in return we come and use some of your equipment, which is excellent. But also some of our students come and work for you and I think you've taken on some of our students as uh, members of staff as well. So what sort of advice would you give for uh, someone that's just finishing a degree or an MSc somewhere and they're thinking about going and setting up their own pharmaceutical company? Would they be better off getting some experience in a small company? Should they go and work for... Glaxo or Pfizer, or should they just take the plunge and set up their own company? Uh, one can, um, of course, I would go for experience because that's what I did. So I worked for Formatures for twelve years, so mm -hmm. that experience was absolutely needed, uh, and it helped me significantly. Mm -hmm. No doubt about it. Um, and and I'm sure experience helps anybody. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, though, the key component is you need to be prepared to work hard. Mm. There is no substitution in, into this world. Um, and then experience will come and help you. Mm -hmm. uh, and and be, keep, keep good contacts. Try to build good contacts um, uh, and be communicative with the people um, so that one day you will get your client onto that. Mm. That's what I would say if, if anyone, a uh, fresh graduate, want to set up their own company. Okay, good advice. And here's a question that students ask me all the time. <laughs> Do you need a PhD to be successful in the pharmaceutical industry? No, not at all. Yeah. You can, what would you recommend? A degree, undergraduate degree, master's degree? Any education helps. Yeah. 
any education helps. There is no doubt about it. I'm not against yeah. a PhD. I myself did a PhD. You yeah. did a PhD. Um, but it's more of a it's more of an attitude, which is a positive attitude, which only takes you from A to B. Yeah. Uh, the e education knowledge helps you. And the positive attitudes of working hard, uh, being there at the right time in the right place. Mm. I mean, see, there are right people all around the world. There are also right places. Mm. Unless or until you show an attitude to reach out to them, <laughs> yeah. you, never, you will never reach there. Yeah. There's pros and cons of both here, isn't there? Because you can go to university and do a PhD, for instance, and you'd learn a lot of skills and get to know people. But at the same time, you can go and work in industry and you learn a lot of skills and get to know people. There's no right or wrong way, is there? And everybody's career journey is different. So I guess the key, the key um, learning point there is, as you say, it's about endeavour and applying yourself and working hard, right? Working hard, be positive. Yeah, okay. Um, what next for M2M? You've got this shiny award. What is it going to mean for you and your company? Um, it means a lot. Like, uh, as I said, um, I, I don't think we, one can quantify. Mm -hmm. However, we will be using this as our marketing tool. Mm -hmm. That's what the award is for. Mm. So that so that British government want to say, a British company is thriving in world stage. Yep. And that's what M2M Pharmaceutical will be doing for the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. We can use the logo. You have seen the very nice logo. We can use this logo for the next five years. Mm -hmm. And I have got an international trip already arranged mm -hmm. for this year and everywhere I'll be going to promote um, uh, this award we achieved. Mm -hmm. And also uh, like British science mm. um, and, and, and how a small but thriving British company can play a vital role to solve a uh, lot of challenges we have got, uh, especially especially the field we are in, mm. uh, respiratory drug delivery, yeah. um, understanding particles, um, how, how can you deliver more? Mm. So within respiratory drug delivery, what are the main service offerings that you see M2N being able to focus on in the next five years? Obviously DPI, DPI is, is our core expertise. Um, but as you know, fundamentally, we look for people to understand the particles, understand the solid state, mm -hmm. um, understand the different physical form, uh, understand the unintentionally made amorphous material. Yeah, very important. Um, so we will still remain focused on those. We'll try to be a bit more innovative on the analytical techniques we are adopting. Mm -hmm. And in relation is fascinating, right? Like a, where whether you do DPI, PMDI, nasal, particles are the key. Hmm. Different different size of particles for a different different route of application. However, the particles are same. They're all particles, aren't they? They all are particles. Yeah. Therefore, we want to still remain focused on, on, on that. Nasal is becoming hot cake. Uh, good thing is nasal only requires more than 20 to 25 microns, so the challenges will be less, but it's still the particles. Mm. Uh, and we want to play the key role in, in nasal drug delivery, mm -hmm. um, where different, uh, because it's interesting. And since COVID, nasal has become a very attractive route for people. Mm -hmm. um, it is no longer uncommon route. Yeah. It's become very, very common, and we want to explore ourselves in, in that field. Very good. So if people write to me and they say they want some experience working for the pharmaceutical industry, can I point them in your direction? Yes, please. At all times. <laughs> That'd be very good. I might send you some uh, students later in the year. You can do yeah, some do. projects. Please do. Please do. Okay, very good. Right, in that instance, thank you very much for coming in. It's amazing to hear the company's success. I remember when it was just you and a very small broom cupboard. So you've come an amazingly long way, which is um, really good. And I personally can't wait to see how the next five years pans out. No, thank you very much for having me. Um, you are a part of the journey. Um, I, I cannot say thank you enough for donating Watson's uh, time machine 
to start with, if you remember those days. Oh, I remember those days. Uh, and I still remember all the critical questions you asked me when you heard that I designed uh, without having a job lined up, without having <laughs> anything lined up. Yeah, uh, great place. And from there to eight years down the line, I've got so many people to thank, like mm -hmm. yourself, Gareth, Asma, Alex Cloud, mm -hmm. um, uh, like now Mary, Soma, Satinder. I can name hundreds mm -hmm. of people at the School of Pharmacy <laughs> yeah. who, uh, who has tremendously helped me for uh, uh, like over last eight years or so. Mm. Well, that is very good. Yeah. Thank you very much, Middle. Thank you for having me. Mm.